Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart in the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. I am truly glad that you are worshiping with us today. This is a virtual opportunity that we will continue to offer throughout these, these next few months as we transition more and more into in-person worship and gathering. I pray that you will find this a viable opportunity to continue to worship the Lord and to gather with God's people in grace and in peace. We are beginning our 11 o'clock in-person worship today. If you have not pre-registered and would like to attend the service, please do pre-register online and or when you come sign in with one of our guests who our guest registration so they can make sure we have your contact information. We also will be offering an outdoor in-person worship service this afternoon at four o'clock. Please note we've changed the time to four to accommodate the uh, sun, which we found was a little bit warm the last time we gathered. Continue to watch and monitor because we will be maybe shifting these times for the outdoor services, but we will continue to provide all three opportunities for you as we continue to transition into a healthier time in our nation and certainly a more welcoming time in our communities of faith. I hope that you will continue to take advantage of these opportunities. Also, I want to remind you that you can attend Sunday School online. You may participate in other studies and meetings as well online. We will begin in-person Sunday School on-site on a class-by-class -class basis on May the 16th. So please be sure to check with your class about whether they are meeting in-person or hybrid or if they're going to still continue to do Zoom or call-in only. Each class has made a different decision for the adults, and the in-person classes will begin on May 16th for our children. We so look forward to welcoming you all back to our campus for worship and for education. As we uh, offer thanks today for so many blessings, we are truly grateful for all of our church members who came to volunteer for the Sunday brunch last week. We had a great turnout of volunteers, a wonderful spirit of community and companionship, and we made a real difference in the lives of some of these folks. And we pray that you will continue to be with us as we look to the future and how we continue to extend God's love in our community. We plan to gather again on May the 23rd from four to six so that we can continue to administer vaccines and also to share God's love with our neighbors. As we continue this morning, let us worship the Lord.
Let us go to the Lord in prayer. O mysterious God, who hides in the shadows of our steps, who surprises in ways inexpressible, who lingers in paradox, ignite our spirits to revel in your presence, inspire our souls to dance in your mystery, free our minds to rest in your holiness, fully comforted, totally quiet, completely yours. In the name of Christ, the mysterious word made flesh. Amen. Please join us now in the response of reading. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Who alone does great wonders. For God's steadfast love endures forever who by understanding made the heavens. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Who spread out the earth above the waters. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Who made the great lights. For God's steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day. For God's steadfast love endures forever. The moon and stars to rule over the night. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Who struck down the firstborn of Egypt. For God's steadfast love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them. For God's steadfast love endures forever. With a strong hand and an outstretched arm. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Who divided the Red Sea in two. For God's steadfast love endures forever and made Israel pass pass through the midst of it. For God's steadfast love endures forever, but overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. For God's steadfast love endures forever, who led his people through the wilderness. For God's steadfast love endures forever, who struck down great kings. For God's steadfast love endures forever, and killed famous kings. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites. For God's steadfast love endures forever. And Og, king of king of Bashan. For God's steadfast love endures forever. And gave their land as a heritage. For God's steadfast love endures forever. A heritage to Israel, his servant. For God's steadfast love endures forever. It is he who remembered us in our low estate. For God's steadfast love endures forever. And rescued us from our foes. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh. For God's steadfast love endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the God of heaven. For God's steadfast love endures forever.
Our New Testament lesson today comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Hear now the word of the Lord. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's way was revealed among us in this way. God sent God's only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and God's love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in God and God in us, because he has given us his spirit, and we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has not been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must also love their brothers and sisters. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Words are powerful. Sometimes we forget the power of words or we want to minimize them. Do you remember the words your mother told you when you were just a child and someone had hurt your feelings? Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never harm you. Even at five, I knew that wasn't true. We all know that words have the power to hurt or to heal, to reconcile or to revile, to encourage or to disrupt, to motivate or to deflate. The words of the Bible sometimes inspire me to chase a rabbit. And this week I chased the word motivation. I am not sure that I have ever attended a conference where they had a named motivational speaker, but I have recorded notes of powerful words that I've heard spoken by others. Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, enduring change happens one step at a time. Somehow, those words have been both comforting and inspiring in this last year. But I digress. There are motivational speakers in every field, in entertainment, in business, in fashion, in parenting, in sports. You can even break it down to football, baseball, or basketball. Motivational speakers can be hired for less than $1,000 or for more than $1 million. I cannot even imagine such extravagance for a single speech. Today, our text goes to the heart of the motivation of God. William L. Self wrote, All God's activity is loving activity. If God creates, 
God does it in love. If God rules, God does it in love. If God judges, God does it in love. God cannot help it. God is love. The gospel answer, he wrote, to the human problem of anxiety, mortality, and meaninglessness is simple. God is love. 1 John 4, 7 through 21 is a testimony to who God is at the very depth of God's being and illuminates for us the truth that we see who God is in what God has done and in what God is doing. God's love was revealed among us in this way, John wrote. God sent God's only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. God's visible love in Christ Jesus, our witness suggests, is also our motivation to love one another. And then we begin what can only be called God's Trinitarian dance with humanity. The Father loved us and sent the Son. The Son loved us and died for us and sent us the Spirit. When we confess Jesus as Lord and live in the Spirit, we bear witness to God's love for us and for the world, and God lives in us and abides in us, and we abide in God, and God is love. Of all the love stories, of all the motivational speeches, of all the grand and glorious words that we can string together in simple syllables and expansive treatises of faith and doctrine, the most powerful words in Christendom are God is love. These three words define the nature of God, the God who created all that exist. God is love are foundational words when the very foundations of life seem to be trembling beneath your feet. You know exactly what I mean. I don't have to name those moments because they're etched in your hearts. Those are the moments when your soul cries out to God and suddenly you are completely aware of the presence of God. In that moment, it is the God who is love that calms the soul, prepares the mind, checks the fear, and enables one to breathe in the strength of God and in the next moment to face life with faith and hope. People of God, you know exactly what I mean. William Self said the gospel answer is love. The gospel answer is love sounds so simple, but it's not really simple at all. As I read Psalm 136 and laboriously echoed the response of the people, for God's steadfast love endures forever, 26 times I recognize that the message is that the motivation for every action of God is love. Creation, God's intervention in human history, and God's ongoing care for humanity and for all of creation. Even God's show of force against the Egyptians was motivated by love. It sounds contradictory, but even God's defeat of kings and nations on behalf of God's covenant people was motivated by love. It's not simple at all. 
It is a testimony to the complexity of God's love for all humanity. How does the creator of all human beings act when human beings use power to enslave other human beings, as in the story of the Hebrews and the Egyptians? God is love. God is love and sets them free. If you read the Genesis story, then you read how God sent Moses and then one by one the plagues as a means of intervention, a way to encourage the Egyptian Pharaoh to release the slaves. And then when they refused, God acted in love for the purpose of setting God's people free. When helpless human beings were hunted down by vast armies, God acted in love. And God used God's power to bring them safely across the Red Sea. It sounds simple but it's very complex. And in all the complexities of human existence in our modern world, injustice, genocide, the devastation of war, socioeconomic disparity, the threat of nuclear armaments, hate speech, demoralizing prejudice, God is motivated by love for all people and for all creation. Yet these complex problems are answered by three simple words. God is love. They only sound ridiculous if you think of love outside of the biblical witness. Because the Bible teaches us that to love as God loves is to risk everything, maybe even to sacrificially give everything, even life itself. God's steadfast love for humankind is caught up in the complex mystery of the cross and the resurrection, in death and life, in body and spirit, and as followers of Jesus Christ, we dance the question, how do we love one another as God has loved us in Christ Jesus? When I was in seminary, every student was required to take at least one ethics class. And one of the assignments was to read a book from the reading list and to write I think a 20-page paper on that particular author's understanding of Christian ethics. I selected the divine imperative. 450 pages. No, I was not smart enough to check before I selected. And Gary selected a much thinner book. It was a book by Paul Lehman, which I can still summarize today. The ethical mandate for Christians is to do the most loving thing in this moment. Our very lives, our every action, like God's action, is to be motivated by love. God is teaching us that God is love and that love is seen in the action of God and in the actions of those who love God. We love one another when we love as God loves, when we forgive one another, when we practice hospitality, welcoming the stranger as if she were family, 
when we seek justice for those who are powerless, when we yield privilege so that others might be lifted up, when we surrender power so that others might share in power, when we live simply so that we can generously share with others. John Wesley would really approve of that. When we pursue good things for other people. When we stand with those for whom the foundations of life are shaking. When we answer the cries of those who are in need. When we make room for our neighbor at the table and within our community when we share our vaccines, not just with people in our country, but with our neighbors around the world, when we labor for fair housing for all people, when we indeed seek to make the world a place of peace. And the good news is that when we make our life choices and our decisions based on love, as complex and as difficult as it is, fear and judgment, anxiety, guilt, and shame are replaced with the knowledge of a God who loves us first, a God who is at work in us, perfecting us in love, and whose steadfast love for all creation endures forever. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. And so the dance of love goes on, and you and in me, and in all who profess faith in the risen Christ. What a joy it is to dance in the love of God. What a joy it is to say, God is love, and to know and to believe that it is true. Amen and amen. Today, as we take time to pray together, I want you to invite you to simply do a small exercise of breathing. As you breathe in, I want you to think about God's love. As you breathe out, I want you to think about how you can love others so that we breathe in God's love and breathe out love for others. Let us pray. Holy God, in silence, we breathe in your love and we exhale knowing that you are sending us into the world to love others. Help us, Lord, to see clearly how well you love all of your children and all of your creation. Forgive us when, in our humanity, we create conflict with sisters and brothers and siblings and cause, O oh God, your holy distress. Help us, Lord, to work hard at loving one another. Help us to live like Jesus and to model his 
love for one another as we live our lives together. Enable us to extend His compassion, His mercy, His joy, and His love and life to all that we meet, believing that You will take our every act of love and transform it into a gift of grace for others. And now will God join our hearts together as we pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to go into the world, let us think about the most important words in Christendom. God is love. May those words sustain us. May they encourage us. May they build us up. And may they motivate us to be ambassadors of love in the name of Jesus Christ. My friends, go into the world to love and serve God and your neighbor in all that you do, knowing that God, the Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer, is with you. Amen and Amen.